Hey everyone, I'm Greg. I am the CTO and the co-founder of YHAT. We're a, a data science company that helps uh, other companies deploy their predictive models. And then we also have an IDE called Rodeo that we've been talking to a lot of you about today. And if you haven't already, uh, give it a try. We've got a lot of members from the Rodeo team here uh, today. So quick agenda here. I'm going to be bouncing around with a lot of demos for this presentation. I think it's a lot more fun if we actually fly the drone than it is if I show you pictures of it. So I'll talk a little bit about the drone that I'm using. I'll show you a quick little example of uh, how I actually fly it from Python. And then I'll go into some of the computer vision that I'm using for actually automating the flight control of the drone. It's a really simple algorithm um, that does some object and color detection. And then lastly, I will put the actual computer vision and the autonomousness of the drone together with the um, automating the flight. And if all goes according to plan, the drone will fall along that red cloth by the end of this presentation. So, first off, <laughs> The actual drone, it's a Parrot AR2. It's in the toys section of Amazon.com, and it's very much a toy. It costs about $200, and uh, get it shipped in one day, at least in New York. It's got a camera on the front up here, camera on the bottom, a whole lot of sensors, and you don't have to be a hardware expert or a robotics expert to understand it. So without further ado, I think we should just get down to business and do some flying. So I am going to be using, let's see, I'm dragging over here. Oops. All right, so I'm using Rodeo for my development environment here. Uh, a little smushed up on the screen, but that's all right. Uh, I've actually, what's gonna happen is I've wrapped a really simple Python class that can interact with the API uh, for the actual drone. And what I'm gonna do is I'll load in my API here. I'm gonna connect to my drone really quick. Okay, cool. Kick off my server. All right, so, oops. All right, so I'm gonna connect with my drone. I've got a connection, not actually doing anything yet, so I will start by actually taking off. And so what this takeoff command is gonna do, it's gonna send a request to the drone. It'll tell it to take off and hover, so this works all right. Uh-oh. Well, luckily we can also land. If you can see it still, I'm gonna calibrate it, which is gonna spin it around and get all of the sensors hooked up and accustomed to the room. And since this is going a little awry, I will go ahead and land my drone. So that went, we'll give it a passing grade. All right, so uh, next thing I'm gonna do here, that was a really simple program. Obviously it had mixed results, but that's cool. Uh, most important part, and what I think is kind of the coolest part of using this drone is the camera. So camera comes equipped with, there's a front camera and a down camera. We're gonna be using the frontward facing camera today. And what we're gonna do is use this red sheet over here as a sort of matador cape, whatever you want to call that thing, to and get the drone to follow the cape around the room. So uh, what we're actually using for this is obviously Python, scientific Python, the scikit image, which is a really cool wrapper around some of the 
more low-level image recognition libraries in Python, and then OpenCV as well. So the general idea here is that we're going to be able to take a picture with the camera on the drone. This is me in our office. I'm holding a red dustpan, which will substitute for the, the cloth for now. And what we want to be able to do is find, using Python, where the red is in our image. And then based off of where that red is, we'll actually make course adjustments and flight pattern, uh, not recommendations, but procedures for the drone. So if all goes according to plan, it'll look something like this, where I can swing this red object wherever I want, and from the center of the camera, the drone will be able to know which direction it should start going. So, first step, we're going to do kind of a soft demo. So I'm not actually going to fly the drone. Uh, with the propellers, we're going to use sort of the six-year-old version of that, which I'll show you in just a second. And I will showcase my... Here we go. All right, so I've got a little web app rigged up here that can look at the camera. And as you can see, I can now fly my drone around the room. And if my lovely assistant here hold up this thing. Get it. Maybe not. Let me try. Let me try another way. One second. Check one more thing here. Ah, here we go. All right, I'm not crazy, guys. Whew. Okay, so if you look here, I've got a little red dot that is tracking the red thing, uh, the, the cloth. If I fly my drone around, it's still going to be able to track the cape. And if there's anything red in the audience, which hopefully there doesn't appear to be anything significant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll get to the green thing in a minute. Yeah, it's fine. It's like, well, I say that now. <laughs> I can't just run into the wall. All right. So second part of our little drone up here, we're going to do well, facial recognition or face detection. This is actually really easy to do in Python. There is a an actual package built into OpenCV it comes with a pre-built model where you just load in the model. You can feed this model in images and it'll give you those lovely little bounding boxes of people's faces. So it's a little creepy, but it's actually pretty cool and easy to use. So for example, I've got this picture of Colin, a rodeo product manager here, and he's sitting on the couch in our office Little does he know he's actually being watched by the drone. So it does a pretty good job of picking up faces. And I'll walk you through now uh, another kind of example. Here's me looking like a weirdo with a dustpan. But you can see that being able to pick up my face in real time as I'm walking around the office. So another exciting demo here. I'm going to jump back into Rodeo here. Let me actually reduce the font size. I thought I was going to need a really big font, but I don't think I do. All right, so I am going to start with the, so for the face detection, uh, like I said, I'm using OpenCV for actually doing the 
uh, sort of the machine learning bit. I'm using scikit image for the kind of the um, the I/O or the reading in images and displaying them. And load those in here. I'm going to use the Colin on a couch uh, picture example, and then I'll, I can display that here since that's a little small. I'll pop this open. Two. Oh, I got big. And I can reduce this down a little bit. There we go. So we've got Colin over there, which is good. I'll make this a little bit smaller. There we go. That'll do. Cool. So for the actual algorithm, I have a, a pre downloaded model file. It's just a big old XML file. You can download it from OpenCV's website reading that in, creating my face, uh, my, my face cascade that is actually going to create those bounding boxes. So I can run that here. And instead of just looking at this array, NumPy array, which isn't super exciting, I can actually, I'll throw on another rectangle onto this so we can see. There we go. We can grab Colin's face and use the face detection algorithm without too much trouble. So to actually give you a little bit more exciting demo, what I can do, I'm going to open up Sorry, it's a little distorted with the screen size here. That's OK. All right, so what I've got here is kind of a bigger version of that walkthrough I just did. I have a series of images that I've saved from, uh, from one of the trial runs I did uh, with the drone. I'm going to loop through all those images and then print them back out. And I'll show you how I made that GIF that I showed you in the presentation. So I can run all these. Oops. Okay, there we go. And so what you can see here is just kind of in real time, this is how the drone is sort of picking up the image and then my Python algorithm is again, it's able to find my face without too much trouble. It's kind of cool when I kind of when I block my face or when the, the uh, red thing gets in the way, it loses me for a second and then typically is able to pick me back up. Question? Yep. What's up? They're really small. I put a, the minimum pixel size for a base at 30 by 30 pixels. And so the guy in the back, is, I think he was something like four pixels or six pixels or something like that. So he just didn't get picked up. Could you change the scope from the pixel size? Yeah, you can. So the, uh, the function that I'm using for this is, let's see, it's right here. So I can actually specify the minimum size for the algorithm, some other parameters, hyperparameters for tuning it as well. Will it pick up multiple faces simultaneously? Yeah, it'll pick up multiple faces at the same time. Uh, I don't have an example of that, unfortunately, but uh, it does do that. So that's the, the face detection bit. Um, the other piece that red detector, the red filter that I showed you all earlier. Again, same kind of deal. Uh, working with, oh, whoops, sorry, wrong one. I've got a sample image loaded here, which I can show you. Again, me with the dustpan. The way that this one works is actually really simple. So it creates upper and lower bounds for the color red. So they're a little loose, but See generally here, I'm looking at RGB values from 100 to 255, et cetera, and filtering out anything in the image that doesn't appear within that span. So I can set those bounds like this. I can create what's called a mask and then apply that mask to that image that I just showed you. And then I can re-render that. And what you'll see here is that I've got that same picture of me holding the dustpan, but 
it's filtered out anything that's not in that color spectrum, and so it just got that sort of half moon or uh, shape that's appearing there. And so in order to turn that into some coordinates or some a flight plan that we can actually follow using a really simple algorithm that just computes the center of mass of the image. So in this case, that means looking at all those parts of the image that are red and then calculating what the middle of that image is. So it's actually conceptually quite simple and which is somewhat nice for something that's kind of complex. And what you'll see is when you do that, I placed a dot just where that is actually computing the middle, and you can see it's right smack dab in the middle of the red. So it works pretty well. It's not too complicated, and it's pretty fast. To actually turn that into some coordinates that we can, that we can use to direct the drone is actually fairly easy. I'm way to do that. I'm computing the um, kind of the center as a percentage. So I'm creating a vector that's going to point from the center of the image to the spot on the image uh, to the spot where the red part is showing up. So uh, pretty simple. Get my x and y coordinates. I'll grab that image again. I'm going to put a vector or a line on that image. And when it shows back up, you can see I've got that nice vector that's pointing from the middle to the direct, to the red part. Yeah, Jim. What happens to that two red things? Yeah, that's a great. That's a really good question. So if I and this has happened incidentally when people in the office are wearing a red shirt. So if, for instance, I had something red here and something red over here, the uh, the algorithm would compute it in such a way that it would determine the middle or the direction that it should go would be in the center. So it is susceptible to certain flaws. There are ways to get around that. Use a really weird color. Red's actually not super common in offices. Another one is if you, um, it would be slightly different, but you could train the algorithm to look for a particular shape or look for a particular uh, object so, for instance, we actually played around with, instead of using something red, with using a piece of paper with a smiley face on it, which is actually, that's pretty unique. It's a lot harder, so we, you know, we were on a time crunch, so we stuck with red. But uh, there are other ways that you could kind of go about it in, in, ter in order to create uniqueness. So from that, uh, just really quick here, from that, from that placement, what we'll wind up with is uh, I had the dustpan relatively in the middle, so really nothing, nowhere to go in the x direction. In the y direction, it was above the center of the camera, so my algorithm said, okay, you should go 28% you know, thrust downwards. So it worked pretty well. Uh, you can actually put it to the test now. <laughs> All right. So. With that, we can get down to business. All right, Colin. One second here, let me get everything ready. All right, cool. Another thing I found Always have an emergency landing script handy before you start this type of stuff, yeah. just in case. All right, you ready? All right, <laughs> more or less. All right, where's my mouse? Woo. So you can go to maybe 
Oh, there we go. What? Is it still? Yeah, it's still finding you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I'm using a I'm using a Node.js library. That's right now that's the best one that's available for the drone. That's set up as just a server that can talk to the drone, and then I have a Python client that's pinging that. So it's a little bit of a roundabout way of accessing and talking to the drone. But it uh, it does work. So I have just you know import drone and then I can run various commands for it. Uh, let me see if I can. Mm, don't work. All right, Colin, we'll, try, we'll do one more trial. Might be out of battery. Nope. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. Woo! Move to the... <laughs> Well, thank you. I uh, unfortunately you know, don't always get the best run, but uh, I hope it was at least fun. And if you have questions, I have plenty of time to talk about anything else. So the question was, how fast can it track the uh, movement or the, the object? The biggest limiting factor that I found, and this was something that was driving me crazy until about three days ago, was that the, it takes a while for the image to get from the drone to the uh, Python process. The Python process that is computing the color and the faces is actually pretty fast. Uh, to overcome that time, I had to drop down the quality of the image a lot. So that's why you know, when you seeing it, you probably noticed it was, it was a little grainy pixelation was, was pretty high. So it's, uh, you know, it'd be nicer if it was faster, but it's using this library called FFM, I can't remember the acronym, but um, then, and that's where the choke point is. And uh, with this uh, face tracking, so it was very good because you were tracking the object, and what is the face tracking button? It's just kind of fun and makes it a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little bit, a little bit more fun. So 
Yeah, you could avoid hitting somebody, maybe go in the opposite direction of faces, but unfortunately the, the graininess is, uh, it makes it harder if you're trying to do it like in real time while it's flying. Yeah. Is this code available? Yes, I haven't put it on GitHub, but, but I will. It's, it's kind of a all over the place right now. You'll find it under GitHub slash Y hat slash drone. Drone, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, they're oh from static images. I don't from static. I don't from static images. There's a module that someone built for the drone that can do uh, like instead of just using like arbitrary, you know, go right at ten percent or twenty percent thrust, you can do distances. So you can say go forward ten meters or go right ten meters. So that part that would be kind of half of it, and then the other half is the actual like, the image stuff. And when I was figuring out what, what I was going to use for this, I did come across something, I think it was in the, um, Google just released a really cool algorithm that'll do, they will like look at a room and figure out the different parts of the room and get like spatial kind of stuff. So I can't remember the name of it, if anyone knows it. Yeah, uh, so you can try that. Have you, have you thought about um, writing an algorithm to do a machine learning on the thrust? And, and um, I, I sent this command, but it's actually going back to the front. I haven't gotten that far. I wish the. Uh, so if you can't tell from the back, there's a little bit of duct tape and whatnot on the drone. It's been through a lot, and so I think the like going back thing might have been a function of that. I've been playing with it this week, but uh, it would be nice if I had a way to correct that kind of stuff. Have you tried, rather than trying to repurpose that in the Raspberry Pi, you build one yourself? The Raspberry Pi would have been local. Yes, uh, I haven't tried that. You can, you can SSH. Uh, sorry, the question was uh, try it with Raspberry Pi or. Arduino, you know, that, that kind of thing. I, I have not. I decided like one really new toy per project, at least for this. You can SSH into the drone and it runs Linux of some flavor. I don't know, I don't know what, uh, but you can you know, monkey around with it and it's, it's running over Wi-Fi, so it's, it's actually really easy to set up the network and all that. Like right now I'm just connected to the See it, but the, the drone, it's like AR drone, and then some serial number. It was really easy to program. I was shocked. I thought it would take me like a week to figure out how to get it to work with Python and with Node.js, and it worked the first time, which almost never happens. Did you look at putting a Python distribution on the device? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't get that far. They're piping it over Wi-Fi. Bluetooth? Uh, I no, I didn't try. I don't know if it works. Yeah. You mentioned that it has two sensors in addition to the cameras. Mm -hmm. the sensors measure? Uh, the sensors can measure. Let me see if I can grab the example. Actually. have it. Uh, you can get the, it's like the altitude, you can get things about it. There is a plugin that can do GPS. You have to buy you know, the arbitrary next level up of the drone. And then there's a lot of information about 
the position of it, so angle. I, I was an aerospace engineer, so I'm going to botch all these terms. But it's like yaw and. It's not like an ultrasonic rate sensor kind of thing. It's, a, not, it's an accelerometer. Not, not that I know of. They do overlap. It's honestly, it, they all seem to do kind of the same thing. Psychic Images API tends to work. It does. It's more more like modern Python, it's more like Pandas or Scikit Learn than OpenCV. It looks more like someone took a C plus plus library and just converted it into Python. So it, it works totally fine. But it's, for me, I'm comfortable with Python, so it's a lot easier to use SK Image for most of the stuff. Great. Well, thanks, guys. I thanks for being patient.